Who's ready for some specialty game conversations? With ACC football, we have some exciting additions to our 2024 roster. We'll run through those as well as some ACC hoops. Find out who just made it back to business and who is still sort of falling short. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked On ACC. I'm your host, Candace Cooper, joined by Kenton Gibbs of Locked On Wolfpack. Each and every day, you can find us wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure you download, subscribe to the pod from anywhere, and well, as well as join our YouTube space, where you can subscribe, there it is, to our channel, talk to us in our community, in the comments, and always leave us five-star reviews because we always appreciate that. Now, today's episode is jam-packed because we got some specialty games to go over, but want to remind you that our episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. We know you guys are getting in your last minute NFL bets, but don't miss out on making every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, we'd be silly if we didn't go over all the fun that's happening around our league, especially when it comes to ACC football, we know that we went over week one, gave you a little bit of tea. Clemson, Georgia was, of course, the nicest one. But we've got some specialty games to add for Thursday, Friday matchups that we feel like we have to go over because y'all are so invested already in January. Absolutely. How the 2024 season is going down. Kenton, cannot believe people are already this invested in ACC pigskin. You know, here's the thing. I know what it is. Everybody want to get their get back. They want to take the crown off my head from the pick em. You know, they want to take the crown off my head from the pick em. And here's the thing, okay? Candace and I have discussed. We've lightly talked about doing a pick em for basketball if y'all need to get scratched that itch. But we, we decided to not do it. So you're going to have to wait until August to get your get back. Well, but don't ask me. Sure. I don't think basketball gives the same sort of vibe as football does. But as to that point, for those who are new to our show, can you please explain what we did for football season and kind of how we were collaborative with our group? Absolutely. So what we did was he said, she said, the fans said, right? So there was my predictions for the week, Candace's predictions for the week, the fans prediction for the week. And whenever we had a guest that week, we also put up the guest pickers. Uh, predictions. And I believe Brian Smith of uh, Locked On Seminoles had the best week in terms of of total predictions uh, in percentage, winning percentage in his predictions during his week. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'm going to say it like this here, okay? I've had multiple hosts reach out to me wanting to get involved. You know, last year it was myself first, the fans second, Candace came in last, but it, it's all right. I don't like how you used the last word. It was more so like Candace had to keep the show spicy, and it would have been mm-hmm. crazy if we picked the same thing every single week. So she decided to ruffle a little feathers, okay? And sometimes she landed, sometimes she missed. Mm-hmm. Either way it went, we all had fun. And bringing up the rear was Miss Cooper. <laughs> and I'm okay mm-hmm. with that because nobody likes a know-it-all. But you know what? But you know what everybody and you're does. You're too competitive like? to not be in making this fun. You have to win, and that's your play. Listen, hey, we all have our testimony. Amen. I, I, I'm working. I'm working on being a better loser. But in my family, we threw away all the participation trophies, and and my family always said, "Show me a good loser, and you just show me a loser." That's that's just that's what it is, you know. And I'm working on it. I promise you, I'm working on it. But you know that's that's neither here nor there. Heaven help Let's- your children. Heaven help your children. Specialty games is where we're at, though, and we already early pickups. If I fear, maybe maybe we go ahead and throw a little razzle dazzle. Maybe throw a little my bone, right? Right. Throw mm-hmm. a little you pick them kind of conversation. I don't know. You you decide. You're you're the community leader when it comes to this. But we do want to go over the Thursday and Friday night lights that are happening around the ACC. So without further ado, week one has some specialties. Three, if you will. Mm -hmm. Thursday, week one, 829. 
will be Minnesota and North Carolina, which we discussed yesterday. We will also have NC State and Western Carolina. And we'll also have Wake Forest and A&T. And we talked about all those schools. If you missed out on the opportunity to hear from us, please check out yesterday's show. But just to give a quick quick synopsis, Carolina expectations are sort of question mark. NC State has everything ahead of them to be a really great ACC program and be with top of the leaderboard arguing towards the end of the year. And then Wake Forest, you know, maybe just be happy to be here this season. Maybe Coach Clawson is sort of, you know, adding to the resume, figuring out what he's going to do next. Who knows? But let, it, let me know if I summed it up properly, Kenton. You go for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that that just about takes the cake there. And again, listen to our show daily. Go back to yesterday if you want to hear the in-depth razzle-dazzle to it. But today we just we throw in the parsley on the food. You know, you know, those IG chefs, they love themselves some parsley on there. So that's that's what we do. Is it parsley or chives? You know, they love both, but they really love parsley. Like they put mm. parsley on stuff. I saw parsley on the Hawaiian road the other day. When I tell you I was living. I was livid when I saw. Why would you put parsley on the roll? Parsley isn't fla- doesn't have flavor, does it? No, it's mm. literally just for presentation. Mm. Like, what are we doing here? So that Chives, one time, on the other hand, do have a flavor. They definitely do. They do have a flavor. So that one time that I put parsley over my mac and cheese, that's probably why it wasn't a hit with the people. Huh? Okay. Mm. Okay. I feel I already see the judgment in the comments coming. From our friends, I, I watch feel the like show. you're a craft mac and cheese girl. Do you do you bake? And the that's disrespectful you... because I do not do red dye number six. You know what I mean? I very much am a cook. Don't play with me. I'm from the south now. Now you have to make the accent come out and we get real special. But I make great baked mac and cheese. Family mm-hmm. favorite. I make it on Thanksgiving. That's how you know it's a staple. Okay. Well, I bring my winning smile to Thanksgiving every year. Let's just be very clear. I bring my winning smile in that every year. Just be clear. I don't culturally speaking, because you know uh-huh. keep, we can keep it well versed around here. Mm-hmm. In a multicultural home, specifically African Americans, you are not permitted to make the mac and cheese if you don't know how to make it. I don't know if you've seen that video where she was mad at the lady for experimenting. Don't experiment on Thanksgiving. Don't experiment. <laughs> no, you if you want to experiment, you make it for yourself. And she was right. <laughs> Auntie was right. Granny was right. Whichever one she was. She was right. You don't experiment on that. I'm just saying. It's, listen, listen, listen. I liken it. I liken it to getting to the ACC championship and experiment. That's okay. crazy. That's you, crazy. You don't switch it up too much, right? If, you do- if, if you've run the star concept all year okay. and you have gotten that open all year and your quarterbacks made the right read all year and when teams bid on that, you run the star and go to counter off that all year. What are you doing out here all of a sudden becoming a verticals team? What where where do we get that from? Where why are we running triple option? Where did this come from? You know, that's we love a little X and O's parsley razzle dazzle. All right, week one, week one, that's our full Thursday list. But there are more Thursday night actions, right? Boston College will take on Virginia Tech at week eight on October 17th day after my mama's birthday and i just feel like at that point week eight you love to say at week five we know who the team is but for these two teams this could be very much indicative of how their season ends you know i'll tell you this much if by week eight we're still asking questions about these two teams um that's a good thing for boston college bad thing for virginia tech if we know that boston college is bad by this time we're about halfway We're up out of there, buddy. Um, But if we're asking, like, how good is this team? Which is where we were last year, week eight, with Boston College. Because it was like, you lost to Northern Illinois, you know. And again, I'm going to stop betting against Cass Tech, guys. Shout out to James Esther up there. But uh, then you go on to have a five-game winning streak that includes beating multiple teams in conference. So it's a little helter-skelter there. But Virginia Tech, on the other hand, if we're asking questions about you, something's going wrong because they have done a a pretty good job of of bringing back a good amount of talent. And they finished out the year very, very well. They finished out the year on on a strong note, even without some of their stars in place. And so you're looking at a team that by week eight next year, they should have some things figured out. So if you're asking questions about Boston College, good thing. If you're asking questions about Virginia Tech, bad thing. How many games is it going to take before we get Tafley up out of the paint? You hold that thought. All right, fans, like I said, NFL postseason is here. Do you want the Eagles 
they're not there. The Chiefs, they're there. Whoever is your favorite, all that. You got to go to FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. It's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first win a touchdown. Uh, FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. So, six games, seven games, four games, what is it? I mean, I think if, if Halfley is going after four games, something's going horribly wrong. Like, those boys have gotten the wheels whooped off them in those first four. Um, but I honestly think that he's got a shot of staying because that's how much I believe in Castellanos. I think he's really special. I think he's have really special. Have you seen special. the defense? There's two sides of the ball. There, he's supposed to be a defensive wizard. There, there are. All right. All right. There I'm are. Just, just curious. But, but they got up in that portal. And they may have addressed some needs. And I know that we – I'm going to say this. I'm not drinking the Halfley Kool-Aid because I don't want anybody coming to me saying, well, get last year you just were so out on Halfley and this year you drink – I'm not drinking the Halfley Kool-Aid. I'm drinking the Castellanos Kool-Aid. Okay? Hey. Because – you know, He's, you know, you know, you know how I get down. So I'm, I'm cool on that. I, I can, I can get with that. I'm just saying. I, I think that he can be. I think they can do enough to keep him for another year. But I think it, even if this year they get to that six win mark again, okay, next year six wins won't be enough. Like it, even with Castellanos, even with you need more. You need more. And they've, they've done a good job of picking up some really big time backs in the portal and whatnot. So. You know, we'll we'll see uh, what they can what they can do in terms of you know adding really good pieces um, via recruiting in the portal. He definitely saved his job last year. He's still on that thin ice. Absolutely He's agreed. All right, week nine, October twenty fourth, will be a thir- another Thursday night matchup. This time it will be between Syracuse and Pittsburgh. Now, by this point, week nine, Syracuse either is we're on the high from the new coach. Or we're saying, Pitt, show us who we thought you were these past couple seasons. Yeah, and, and you know, and you know what? Even if we're not on the high, see, here's the thing: these are two coaches that are in exact opposite positions. Very much. Regardless so. of what Coach Fran does, they could win one game this year. Nobody's going to be ready to fire Fran. It's his first year. Well, it's not year. even that. Fran don't want to go nowhere, so he say. So it's like, how can how can you fight a man that don't want to go somewhere? And it's Syracuse. You feel me? Well, Dino didn't want to go nowhere. Dino was not looking nowhere else, but, you know. Dino yeah. was definitely looking, but go ahead. Well. Forever, forever Orange Girl is about to be, be on my head. But well, all I'm saying is Dino had a he, – he wasn't doing enough. What I'm telling you is what I heard from Fran is we 10 toes about this. This is this I hear is a, you. This I, is a city. City well, Boys on, up right now. On the – on the other side of the city boys being up and whatnot, mm-hmm. you've got Narduzzi, who is a very long tenure coach who took Pitt to heights that they hadn't seen objectively in, in decades. And the only problem is you also took them to lows that they had not seen in quite some time as well. And so now you're, you're looking at a situation where the question becomes, how long can we let you get away with the team performing in this manner? How long? Because if we're looking at week nine and you've got six, five, six losses at that point next year, there's conversation going to start. You might be on the, you don't have to retire, but you got to get up out of here. Oh, absolutely. I don't think he's old enough for retirement. I think he's for sure. Exploring other options. But also, like, I I, I hear that in the same time. Everybody don't want to work till they're 75. And that's okay. You know, he's making good enough money to where he could just relax, go talk on TV. And do what he got to do with and clothing in his right mind. Like we don't all have to be space cadets before we're like, you know what? Maybe it's time to hang it up. I'm just saying. We ain't gonna say no Something names, to but go. yeah, yeah, you know, it, you, you yeah, we ain't got to be go. U.S. Senator age. You ain't got to be U.S. Senator age before you retire. Okay, them folks don't never. President, but, but that's the Week Oof. thirteen has another Thursday night matchup. This will be eleven twenty one, where NC State will take on mm-hmm. Georgia Tech. Yes. How are you feeling? Because we know how you feel about both programs in terms mm-hmm. of key. We know how you feel about the pack, obviously. Yeah. But these are two good teams that are set to have two great seasons by week 13. Yeah. So much could be done. This this could be a game with a lot of implications. This could be a game with a lot of implications. You know, NC State, everybody talks about the law of the wolf in terms of 
when you expect the most, that's when you get the least. But this team just something just feels different. Something just feels different Mm -hmm. because last year people expected things out of the Wolfpack and they showed up. Right. If anybody would have told you, hey, you get three different quarterback or you get multiple quarterback changes, you get your running back one, running back two, transfer out of the program midseason. You get all the things that you had happen in terms of losing uh, so many safeties. You were down to, to guys who were on the scout team at the end of the season, still with nine games. What a shocker. But then on the other end, this is a Georgia Tech team that is they're trending up and up and up and up and they just keep getting better. And so this game could have a ton of of implications because Key is building a great culture at Georgia Tech. He's building a great culture in Atlanta. Do you know how hard that is? In the land of hookah and BBLs, you are building a great team culture. My brother, you are accomplishing something phenomenal. And so, (laughs) and so, and so, You've got to give him his God so what he's got it. And this is a situation where I'm that game I'm gonna be looking at with tons of intrigue. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that these ain't the same old yellow jacket. Well, I also think you have two coaches who have had patience from their administration to get it right, build what they want to build, build some sort of culture and legacy. And by now, you know, Boo Corrigan, NC State, Dave Dorn, I don't see him leaving unless he wants to leave, right? right. Because there's certain ceiling that an ex level of expectations we have for NC State for Georgia Tech as well. I think that we've given, like you said, given due time. And I think this is kind of where they turn the corner and turn the page and have a really breakout. I'd argue this is a breakout season for Georgia Tech. And you know what? Year two, this is his second full time or second full year as the head coach going into the offseason and all that. Mm-hmm. And Statistically speaking, coaches are most likely to win a national championship within that first two, right? Other than the outliers of like a saving or something like that, where it's like, hey, is your 20? We still win. Uh, for the most part, you know, that that first two year window is where coaches uh, generally get it done. But again, key is he's built something special in Atlanta. He really is. I really believe that. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Y'all know me. I'll get on this air and I'll say, hey, he fooled me. He got me, you know, but I think that there's something good going on down there. And I, again, that's a game. It could mean a whole lot of nothing. It could be a whole lot of something. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. Let's talk about our Friday night light matchups, right? We talked about week one with Duke and Elon, Stanford and TCU. If you have not checked out our episode from yesterday, do yourself a favor get in on that action because we talked about Stanford coming to the party, Duke trying to start out. And, you know, this is the Manny Diaz era of Duke, which I never thought I would say Manny Diaz and Duke in the same sentence, but here we are. So we got all that in-depth analysis there, but week two features SMU and BYU. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like on nine, six, I'm still getting used to SMU at that point them being a part of the ACC and having to talk about them each week. And, you know, I need to do my due diligence this January. Give me grace. I just don't know what I'm getting besides the, what I know to be 30 for 30 Pony Express. So, Kenton, if you want to enlighten, great. But if you wanted to say, I give me some time, that's fair, too. Oh, I absolutely love me some SMU. <laughs> Let me tell you something. SMU can't do no wrong by me, and not just because of the 30 for 30, okay? Don't get me wrong. The 30 for 30 was very entertaining. It was mm-hmm. amazing. However, SMU football has been, they have been on the up and up for some time, and they have always had these prolific passing games, first under Sonny Dykes, then now you've got Rhett Lashley in there. That is an exciting team. That is a very, very exciting team. They are going to light up the scoreboard, but they also have some pretty good playmakers on the defensive side of the ball as well. They can also generate a turnover or two, when you need it, in that timely moment where you're like, oh, man, we really need to stop. I love me some SMU. I'm excited to have them in the conference. I hope they do some good things here. You know what I mean? Somebody's got to be positive, Lord. I feel it. I, I'm, you're actually making me maybe more enjoy it, but we'll see. Remain I'm going to keep it level-headed. I'm going to tell you, you're bringing in one of the biggest Metroplexes in America and bringing Dallas into this ACC thing. Welcome on in. Come on. Take your shoes off. Wake yourself at home, SMU. Can I take take your pocketbook? (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. They better take care of BYU as well. They better take care of them. 
Amen, somebody. All right. Syracuse and Stanford, the battle of the strong, solid block S's, week mm-hmm. four, 920. That'll be a Friday night light match up. I think, you know, Syracuse by week four. Still feeling things out. They're like, oh, hey, welcome to the party, Stanford. Like, who we know we're going to get? Like, I want it to be a good game in the sense of a strong competitive matchup so we can feel like we're it's good we brought Stanford to the stage. I would not like them to curb stomp Syracuse because it would worry me that maybe everyone was right about the league. Like, there's just a lot that I I don't know if I, I want it to blend yet or I want Syracuse to go ahead and let them know, like, welcome to the big leagues, you know? I mean, I, with all due respect, these these are two teams that are very meh. You didn't like, know for me. You didn't know for me, and that's I, right. it's the truth. I I don't think that either one of these teams are. So I don't you're think supposed to be rooting for the OG. You're supposed to be rooting for the OG. Here's the thing. Here's okay. the thing. Okay, right. I'm a transplant in the ACC country. All right, I'm I'm a Big Ten country guy, born and raised, but I'm a transplant into ACC. Way. What where what does your degree hang up and say? It says NC State. All right. So you're an ACC guy. I, I, I understand You're an OG that. ACC guy at that. So I don't really appreciate it. Do, are we I just, mic? Are we, do, we need to, do we need to cut the mic? Okay, okay. We cool. can cut the mic. We can cut the mic now. We can cut the, I'm just saying. You know what I mean? You ain't, ain't finna talk to me in the old kind of way. But no, very seriously. I, maybe it's just me. I'm excited for these new teams. I'm excited for these new teams. And, and I'm hoping it's that just, yeah. I'm hoping they do well enough that it's not like – what did we bring? I hope they embarrass you because now, honestly, because you said that, I hope they embarrass you all season long. Cal, Why? SMU, and Stanford. I what? hope they embarrass you, not the league, just you, just but, you. But my question is, why would you want that? Because it's going to make the league look worse. No. And Listen. you know, according to many fans, we get paid by Jim Phillips. So if if we get paid by Jim Phillips and they're making the league look bad, maybe our checks are going to get cut. You know. Can't get much lower. <laughs> you know what I mean? My third eye is now open. Okay, I get it. I got you. I'm Stay picking woke. up what you're putting Stay down. Stay woke, sister. Stay woke. All right. Virginia Tech, Miami, week five, 927. Mark it on your Friday night calendar. Virginia Tech, Miami. Two. I'm excited. Ooh, yeah. I'm geeked up. That's I'm geeked up one. like Fabo. I'm geeked up like Fabo for this one. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. And let me tell you why I can't wait. Because mm-hmm. These are two programs that, you know, the Virginia Tech appears to be heading up, but so does Miami. And again, we don't ask the same questions of Virginia Tech that we do in Miami in terms of, hey, y'all have the talent, but can you make it work? It's instead the exact opposite. Can you make it work with the talent you have? Because while I talk about Virginia Tech retaining a lot of their stars and all that, they're still not the most talented team in the ACC. That's just a fact. That's just a, a matter of fact there. But the question is, can Pride get it done or can Mario get it done? Who's going to get it done? And what will Mario's team look like by this point? What will Cam Ward and company look like by this point? It's a very important question to ask. This is fair. I kind of wish it was getting played in Lane Stadium on a Friday night, but, you know, I'll let it be. Mm-hmm. Now, Florida State and Duke. Yeah. Week 8, 10-18. Now, when we last left our Florida State heroes, they were having a little bit of a tussle with Duke. Different quarterback, different times. Manny is very much, you know, the new era. But this is at Duke. And this is a Florida State team by week eight. We'll know if they're on the same charge as they were last season, going undefeated. Or, if, you know, a Duke team that's now used to punching people in the mouth, please CC Clemson, can come in and say, hey, spoiler alert, if you're coming into the Wade Wallace, Wallace Wade, that too. Make sure you come ready to play. I don't think Florida State will be on the same trajectory they were on last year, Mm -hmm. but luckily for them, I don't think Duke is either. I think Mm -hmm. that this is a situation where, um, you know, you're going to need a little bit of a rebuild after (laughs) Elko. And so, you think so? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't don't think Manny has that pull. If, If Duke wins seven games this year, I would be shocked. We already put our money down. I would be shocked. And I mean legitimately, like, he needs coach of the year consideration if they win more than seven. Um, with we that already being, have six. We did say six, right? Just to make sure our bet. We did say six. Okay. We did say six. six. And I said I needed to look at their schedule before I bet that. So, don't, that the money ain't on the grain. Y'all hurt me. Fans, y'all hurt me now. Because I don't want nobody coming to – Hey, uh, I'm Candace's friend. We're I need to collect 600. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Six, six for six. Let me tell you something. For 30. My head coach is talking about biting kneecaps. I'll do what I got to do. Okay. I'll do what I got to do. Somebody cut my door, try to collect 600 that I ain't agree to. But it, the reality for this, uh, for this matchup is we think, I think that these will be two teams that aren't what they were last year, but I think Florida State should handle this one. I really appreciate people who listen to this show because the way we go off tangents is insane, but the it way is. we come back is great. And I just it really is. appreciate those who thug it out with us. I just had to say that. I wanted sure. to break the break the fourth wall and let you guys know that I really do appreciate that. All right, week All nine, 1025. Louisville will be at Boston College. Will Halfley be there by week nine? Who knows? But Brom certainly will be. And hopefully he'll just keep the things rolling. Now that we know Plummer won't be there, thank you, Slam Tana, and the rest of the team, you know, Mr. National Champion, who lets us know that Plummer is no longer there. Can't wait to go over the full roster, you know, learn a quarterback. I'm not learning that in January. I'm just letting everybody know that right now. So, and this this game is is at BC or at Louisville? At BC. Okay. Now, last time when y'all went up there, or when y'all went down there to Louisville, them boys ran y'all out that stadium. At the Plum Fool. They were very unhospitable host. <laughs> Did not give you nothing. Nathan. You know when you go over somebody's house and they eating and they don't offer you none and you just sitting there? Like, no, I don't know that because I'm from the South and we don't do that. Okay. Well, I, ain't, I ain't never been over nobody's house. They ain't offer me no plate. Now, that's all right. right. Uh, yes, that's, that's the point. Different. That's the point. That's what I'm saying. Somebody I'm being saying, rude. But somebody- I, ain't never, I ain't never in my life. I haven't experienced it either, but I'm saying for the sake the of the hypothetical, okay, go ahead. for the I'm, sake I'm, of the hypothetical, if you go in here. somebody's house mm-hmm. and they don't give you, they eat and you're like, hey, can I uh, have a, uh-uh, you should have bought some food. You know, Why that type of thing. Go ahead. That's, that's what happened to, to BC when they went down. BC, you better return a favor. You better get some get back. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to be tough because the Louisville team that was good last year went into the portal and may have gotten better. They may have gotten better. Is so it going to be James Brown payback, or is it going to be Rascal it, Flatts payback? It, it may like be both songs, but anyway, it may be the weekend same old song. It may be Louisville running in that trap and taking over that trap the same way that they did when BC came to visit them. I'm just saying, who knows? Hello, somebody. The last game we have here, week 11, 11 8. Our friends, new friends, Cal, your friends, mm-hmm. your friends, that's your cousin, Cal, See, your cousin know. Cal. Candace, Candace, that person that be like, hey, ain't that your little friend? Ain't that your little friend? That's going to be your little cousin Cal is going to be your cousin for the rest of the year, just so you know that. Cousin Cal coming to Wake Forest. And, and you know what? I have some new followers from the Cal Bears as well. I was surprised. I'm like, wait, where are they? Oh, yeah, they're there. Listen, Bears fans, y'all all right with me. I love me some Jared Goff. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all good with me. I love me some Deshaun Jackson. Y'all all right with me, you know. So you Cousin said Cal. Cal is coming to Winston-Salem. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's going to be different for them. They're I was about to say, it's going to be real different. Probably not used to a little town like Winston-Salem. But Wake Forest, you know, they get a little pop in the mouth. Who knows what this Cal team is going to be? Only you do because you know everything about football. But I just, I hope, I hope. For my own uh, alma mater's sake, they show them what the old old guard really does around here. This is, you know, th- we have so many more nerve bowls than we used to have. That's fair. So many more nerve bowls. Stanford, Cal. Yeah, yeah, we got so many more. And this is going to be, I think that this is actually going to be a good game, despite both of these teams being very mid. I think that it's going to be a mid-off, but it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one that I think. We can enjoy and 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 watch and have a good time. But I don't think either one of these teams are very good right now. But I do think that it'll be a good time watching them play. A mid off is crazy. Listen, you know you, you say you, some wild things on this show. Talk. So you so you've never seen two two young women or young men arguing on Facebook and Instagram or something like, oh, look what he looked like, look what she looked like, and you look at both of them, you like. Neither one of y'all is all that much to look at. I get, I'm going to heaven and get my blessing. You might be with some gasoline draw. I ain't, I ain't going to be in there with you. I promise you that. And that's what I'm not doing here today. Cal Wake Forest. The we'll Lord knows my out. heart. The Lord knows my we'll heart. see what comes out of it. But that's our Thursday and Friday specialty. As mentioned, Wednesday is when it all drops at 5 p.m. 
on ACC Network. So make sure you guys check that out. We'll have our live reactions to it. Of course, it might be a two-parter because I feel like it's going to be a lot. We've got 17 teams to go over nowadays. So we might make that a deuce parter. And we want to answer your questions on YouTube that you guys have so lovely asked. We talked about, you talked to ask us what our opinions are for the conference, who needs it more, who are the top five, all those things that we're going to spend, make sure that we spend some time going over. So you don't want to miss that. Before we leave here, we are sometimes a basketball league. Duke, welcome back to the party. Yeah. Sometimes everybody needs that Louisville bounce back. Oh, absolutely. Sometimes absolutely. everybody needs that Louisville bounce back. So Louisville is that it. slump buster. They that they that uh, person that you call up when you going through that. N- never mind. We're not gonna go there. We're not gonna yes. talk about the slump you buster. Gonna, yep. But because see that one actually is the moment where like the gasoline draws will get put on. But I'll say this: you can't lose to Louisville, and Duke did what they needed to do. Okay, they did what they needed. Hit. Pitt beat Georgia Tech 72-64. Florida State is on a roll. That's what I'm saying. I'm nervous about Saturday, North Carolina. They beat Syracuse 85-69 at Syracuse. So I'm just saying, got to be ready for them boys. And then Boston College and Virginia Tech are still going as we're recording this show. It's very much a tight one, 63-65. So we'll see how that all shakes out. But any given night here in this league, you just never know what you're going to get. Make sure you guys come back tomorrow. More football talk and all the good things for Candace Cooper and Kenta Gibbs. Until next time.